Guess who? Ho who? Yeah, it's Mr. Wara. Can you believe it? Shocking, right? Yeah, it's a Mr. Wara video. Math video. Ooh, and we have an iguana. Hey, iguana. Cool. You know, on a personal note, we used to have an iguana here at the old Wara residence. However, those iguanas, oh my goodness, we had a vicious one. I think he almost bit my pinky off. Anyway, long story. For another time, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, pretty hard animal to take care of here. We're going to shrink him down to size like we always do. Ooh, he's so little there. And we're going to take a look at our video. Yeah. Look at this. We're lesson 3.7. Go math. We're looking at estimate decimal sums and differences. Essential question. How can you estimate decimal sums and differences? I don't know, but I'm guessing we're going to figure that out today. And as this video goes on, we're also going to be looking at this mathematical practice. Remember these wonderful mathematical practices? This one, oof, I have no idea. I want to say it could be, I don't know, mathematical practice two. I'm not real sure. Anyway, but we do know that we need to reason abstractly and quantitatively which here you, know, you can say our little I statement is I can use reasoning habits to help me contextualize and decontextualize problems. So what does that mean? Well, contextualize refers to using that real world connection, right? And then decontextualize is taking numbers out of context and working mathematically with them. And so this is our one of our mathematical practices. OK, now you're gone. Let's get going. You yeah. Like the unlock the problem. A singer is recording a CD. <laughs> a CD, really? Old school. Okay. The lengths of the three songs are 3.4 minutes, 2.78 minutes, and 4.19 minutes. About how much recording time will be on the CD? Well, I love that word about. That about lets me know almost immediately that we're looking for an estimate. And it does say use rounding to estimate. To estimate. So let me get a pen. And it says round to the nearest whole number, then add. All right, they gave us an example that 3 and 4 tenths is rounded closer to 3. The rule and the little trick that we always used, I don't know, when I was a young tyke, probably like some of you a few decades ago, <clears throat> And that was that, look, if if you have four or less, it says you're supposed to let it rest. If you have five or more, you up the score. There's a lot of tricky ways to try to remember that. Basically, what he's saying is, look, if you have, if this is the digit here that we're trying to round, then we're going to look at that digit to the right. And if that digit to the right is four or less, we're just going to let that three rest. We're not going to change it, which is what you see here. Here we have the same thing. We're rounding to the nearest whole number. And keep in mind, whole number, yeah, that's one's place. Okay, definitely want to know that. So here we have the nearest whole number here is 2. We look over next door and we see 7. Well, 7 is greater than 5, so we need to, right? Remember, 5 or more, we up the score. So that's going to come up then to a 3, not a 2, because of that 7. Let us know. So what does it say here? Uh, what you want to write. If the digit to the right is less than 5, the digit in the rounding place stays the same. Okay, they just have a different way of saying that. And if the digit to the right is 5 or greater, the digit in the rounding place increases by 1. And that's true statement. Next, we have 4 and 19 hundredths. The 1 is letting us know that it's 4 or less, so we're going to let the 4 rest. When we add all those together, we end up with 10. Looks like to me 4 plus 3 uh, plus 3, 10. And that's how we kind of do it. Not, so there will be about about 10 minutes, and about lets you know we're estimating, 10 minutes of recording time on the CD. And there's a different time and place of when we want to estimate a particular sum or difference, and there's other times that we don't. Let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, try this. Use rounding to estimate. All right. Uh, let's see, round to the nearest whole dollar. Again, whole dollar refers to that ones place. When we ever think of the whole number, whole dollar, we're looking right here, right there. Okay? So, you know, oops, I accidentally hit my one there. Then subtract. Well, I'm looking at this, and you can see that the nine is five or more, so we're going to up the score. So we're going to up that to $28. 
And then here you can see the seven is also letting the one know, hey, you need to up the score. So we're going to rise that to $12. And by just looking at that, you can kind of see 95 cents. It's almost another dollar. Now we simply add these together. I'm sorry, ooh, we don't add them. <gasps> Mr. Wara, we subtract. So let me get my eraser. And so that will be six. And then this will be one. So we end up with $16. To the nearest dollar, it's about $16. Okay, now the line just no no sense on that one there. Round to the nearest ten dollars. All right, ten dollars is like saying the tens place. All right, so then we subtract again. We still have the same number here, um, twenty-seven dollars and ninety-five cents. We're going to up the score here because we're trying to round to the tens place. This is the tens place, and the seven is five or more. So we're going to up that two. Two or three. And everything else just automatically turns to zeros. If you haven't noticed, we don't worry about that. We just round. Here, same thing. We're going to the tens place. But now the one is saying, no, no, no. Four or less, which it is, let it rest. So I'm going to let that one just stay there. Now what's interesting is, now because we were rounding, this doesn't say 11, but this says 10. Because we're rounding to the nearest tens. That means anything to the right of tens has to be zeros. All right, so now we're going to subtract and we end up with $20. And $20 we'll put down here, since that's our answer. Okay, use appropriate tools. Let's keep moving along here. It says, do you want to, I'm sorry, do you want an overestimate or an underestimate when you estimate the total cost of items you want to buy? Explain. I like they use the word estimate quite a bit in here. Well, overestimate would mean is that you're asking for a little bit more. I mean, you're overestimating a particular item as opposed to underestimating. Well, if you're looking at total cost of items, what this question is basically saying is, is you know, if you were going to buy, let's say, I don't know, like a barbecue grill, and the grill is like $24, you'd want to overestimate this a little bit, maybe to like $30, just as an example. You wouldn't want to come down to $20 when you're figuring out the total cost of an item because you wouldn't have enough money then. So if you said, oh, okay, I'm just going to estimate it at $20, well, then you're going to show up in the store and you're not going to be able to buy that item. So let me go ahead and write my explanation down here. So here we go. This is what I decided to write is that I would want an overestimate to make sure that I had enough money to buy the item. And the example I gave was that barbecue grill. Okay, now we have used benchmarks. Now, benchmarks are familiar numbers used as points of reference. You can use the benchmarks 0, uh, 25 hundredths, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, and 1 to estimate decimal sums and differences. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is example 1. So it says use benchmarks to estimate. To estimate. Okay, we have 18 hundredths plus 43 hundredths. Now, locate and graph a point on the number line for each decimal. So they've already got 1800s already listed here. As you can see, they've divided this number line into fifths, looks like. So we'd have 0 0.05, 0 0.10, 0 0.15. So 0.18 would be between uh, those. So that's great. And now, um, and it says that it is closer to, obviously it's closer to 0 0.25. All right. We also have 43. Uh, hundreds and 43 hundreds if this is being divided by five that's like saying 30 right 30 35 40 you're not going to quite make it 45 so it's going to fall right into this cat category here this is going to be 0 0.43 now that's pretty close to 0 0.50 clearly closer than 0 0.25 so we're going to say it's between oh it's between uh what did i say the 0 0.25 if you use that one and 50 hundredths so obviously it's going to be closer to 0 0.50. So when we start looking at this, we add them up. So you can see that we would just do 0.25 being the estimate plus the 0 0.50. That's going to equal then 0.75. And this would be our estimate of that problem. I just hope that makes sense to you. Um, that we're basically looking to, to try to find where it's the closest to because it's so much easier to add these two decimals together than it would be to try to work out 1800s and 4300s. Look at the 8 and the 3 aren't even compatible like in the sense that it makes you have to carry over. This makes it you can do it right in your head. That's the idea.
All right, how about example two? Same thing, use benchmarks to estimate, okay? Locate and graph a point on the number line for each decimal, identify which benchmark each decimal is closer to. So I look at 0.76, well look here, here's 0.75 right away. You know that one's gonna be right there, pretty close. Assuming that do we have the same five hundredths intervals, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So we still have five hundredths as the interval of each uh, one of these, it's like an increment of 0 0.05 on our number line. And then it says uh, we have 0.22. And of course, we looked at that being 20, so 22 is gonna be very, very close, okay? And that's gonna be 0 0.22. I guess I should mark the other one, 0 0.76. And now it says this one here is between, well, obviously it's between 0 0.75, the large one, and one, it is closer to 0 0.75. Over here, this one's obviously between 0 and 0.25. It is closer to 0 0.25. I mean, it's almost on top of it. It's so close. Now we're subtracting. This time we're not adding. So in this case here, we were going to obviously have 0, 7500s minus the 2500s. And we're just subtracting. That's going to give us 0, 0.50. Okay, I think I fill those up. And, you know, that's pretty much it. Oh, it's about. So we're saying it's about. They make you fill in a lot of these blanks. So I guess it can kind of make your, I guess that's your statement, right? And oh, it does say something about here about mathematical practices for math talk. How using rounded benchmarks to estimate a decimal difference can give you different answers. Yeah, it could give you different answers depending on what benchmark you use. Like in this case, you know, we use the quarter, you know, the 0 0.25, 0 0.50. So depending on which benchmark you use, could change your answers a little bit. And estimating is not a perfect, perfect uh, thing where everybody's going to always get the exact same answer. Just some estimates are better than others. We flew through this video. I kind of felt like I went really fast. I don't know. Maybe I did. But you know what? It is the end. It's it's here. I mean, you, you hear the bumper music in the background? Yeah. You know, it is time for me to give you those famous, famous four words. Live long and prosper.